So I'm 110 kilos. We're gonna put that bowl on there. I lock the hand wheel off on the back of the lathe and then I slowly feed that on all the way in there, get my spanner and then just nip it up ever so gently. I don't ream on it, I just nip it up. And then we're good to go. Then I get my vacuum cup and then feed that on. Oop, I'm losing the hand wheel. Feed that on there and same thing again. I always give it that little flick at the end to just bind that metal on. I just want to do a quick demonstration of the pull test and let's, uh, let's see how much. So I'm 110 kilos. We're going to put that bowl on there. We're going to let it suck right on. I'm going to put my mask on. And then you have it. That is not coming off that chuck. Holy dooly. So, I wanna get this bowl now. It's a beautiful piece of camphor laurel and I wanna take off the tenon. And now there is some apparatuses that you can use to balance it up on the lathe because some people have told me that it is quite tricky and those air press chucks that I was telling you about that Glenn Lucas uses, they've got several lines that run down here. It's like a bit of a ribbed sort of surface down here and you could line the rim of your bowl up onto those lines. You could even probably draw some on there. But one little way of getting around that if, you, if you're struggling to balance it up on the lathe is to bring up your tail stock here. And before I ever move onto a bowl, I never remove that point there. I always make sure I mark the bottom of the bowl so I know where center is. Put the bowl on there, bring up the tail stock just we're not using it for the tail stock. I just want to balance that bowl up on the lathe, bring over my banjo there and my tool rest and make sure it's looking really neat and good to go. My next experiment that I want to show you with the vacuum pump and why I like this vacuum pump in particular, and there's probably other ones out there on the market that do the same thing, which I recommend you look for as well, is a little fail safe. So I want to show you that now. So we're going to flick the pump on. Did you see that little bit of vapor then just come out? Just trickling that little bit of vapor. So we're going to suck on there. Take that away. And now we're completely on. We're on that chuck. I'm going to turn the lathe speed down low. Have it running low. And then I'm going to kill the power. The beauty of that system there is it's got a fail safe in there and you can still see the mercury there that it's holding on and it won't drop in pressure. It won't drop in suction, sorry. So just keep that in mind when you're going out and looking for a pump that to keep, if it has that option in the pump, that a little fail safe there, if the power cuts, you won't have your bowl flying off and smashing you or around the face or hurting someone. So just keep that in mind when purchasing your pump. Your next car, the Rolls Royce. Oh, imagine that. So let's bring it up now. Let's take the tenon off. So I've got a little half inch bowl gouge here, sharpened to 45 degrees with the uh, heel removed. And I'm gonna remove the tenon off this bowl. I apologize in advance if the audio is not the best, but let's get into it. And you can see straight off the bat that how quick you can just move through the bowls, especially at the moment, I've got 17 bowls over there that I need to remove all those tenons. And it's just, it just speeds up the process so quickly. I'm just gonna come out the back here and I'm gonna push in. A little bit more, just flatten that off. 
taken that blade out. And now I'm going to have the my pinky behind the back of the tool there. My fingers over the front of the flute. Handle down low. This is a little handle. I'm used to bigger handles, but I'm going to come on right on the outside there. Not all the way on the outside, but run along, angle my body in, come in a little bit, and then flatten back out. Slowly open up my flute a little bit. Slow down towards the end. Take that tenon off there. It'll need another cut. I just want to show you something. When you're checking your tenon, just get your ruler, your straight edge, and place it on the bottom. And if you can see daylight underneath there, that means you're riding on the outside edges of the foot. So it is. I'm just going to do one more little little tidy up. Little tidy up cut there. Ooh. Make it nice and clean. Alrighty, so we're going to get stuck into some sanding now. I'm just going to list on the screen the stuff that I use and, and the grits that I work through because I believe that's important for everyone to know and not to skip past those grits, but I'll fast forward through this because I know sanding can be quite a painful process, but I start with the Powerhead sander, then I move on to the U-Butte Polishers Rotary sander, and I just believe I get a really good finish with that. I'll put in the description below some videos that I've made previously about sanding and using Danish oil as a wet sander and just gives a really nice good coverage finish to your projects. But one thing that I really wanted to add to this is I thoroughly enjoy making these videos and I really do get a good kick out of it and I hope that I am sharing good quality content with you that is based on facts and based on uh, information that you can then take and apply to your practice. And one good metric of me knowing that you are gaining something from my videos and if only, only if I've deserved it and if you have learned something is by tapping the like button down below and that just proves to me that you are getting something from the videos and you are, that I am helping you on your journey. So. All right, we're going to get into some wet sanding and I will talk to you all soon. Is that I'm building up the little fines, the little fine paste, little paste, and I'm, I'm working that paste across the surface. Normally I'd have this spinning in reverse, so I'd have it going the other way. But I'll also link a video in the description below of my Danish oil wet sanding, the technique that I'm using right now to give you an idea of how I go about finishing up the bowls. Before I would apply the oil, I would sign it as well, but I don't want to insult your intelligence on how I sign the bottom of bowls, but if you're curious, I'll link it in the description of the, in the video below. So that there is my vacuum chuck setup, all the little implements, the chuck, and how I remove the tannin, sand, and oil. And now I'm not, I didn't go through every little implement that I need to set this up because every lathe is going to be different. So do your research in what your requirements are for your lathe and the bits and bobs that you, you'll need to move forward. But this is just a basic insight of to how I go about using my vacuum chuck to remove the tenon. In this next video here, I'll show you how to remove the tenon with the bowl jaws, the Vicmark bowl jaws set up and how I go about doing that. But until then, I will see you and talk to you directly. Cheers guys, bye.